First, the facts. Iowa beat the Daylights out of Illinois on the scoreboard, 45-16 at Kinnick Stadium. In yards, the Illini led 446-441 and held an edge in time of possession. It was a tight game until it wasn't. Therein lies the dual perspective from this game. The true believers saw Iowa's second-half performances of turning point in the right direction that could vault the Hawkeyes back into Big Ten West Division competition. The doubters will consider the opponent in the yardage allowed and think of Iowa as posers. I'm in the middle on this one. Six weeks into this crazy, mixed-up college football season, the Iowa football team is like jello just poured into a glass bowl. It's headed to the refrigerator for a week, and then we'll see in what shape it's molded the rest of the way. Right now we're 4-2, halfway through the season, a six-game stretch left, Iowa linebacker Ben Neiman said. We just have to keep getting better and improve in practice and really recover this week, and then mentally just improve. The second half against Illinois, I think we took a step forward and played well, really in all three phases, and that's something to be excited about. We're definitely not where we want to be yet, but we're on the right track. In uninspiring fashion, Iowa led 17-13 at halftime. Hawkeyes running back Ivory Kelly Martin coughed up a fumble inside Illinois' 10-yard line, and quarterback Nate Stanley was intercepted for the second time this season. Illinois completed a pass for 40 yards and had a 58-yard rush. If it wasn't for a successful fake punt, the Hawkeyes would have trailed. Considering Illinois was one of the nation's worst in total offense and total defense, it was the type of first-half effort that led many to question about the team's direction this season. Two weeks ago, the Hawkeyes traded blows with number 4 ranked Penn State. Now they were gashed by the Illini, one of the Big Ten's worst teams. It was tough in the first half and credit goes to Illinois, Iowa coach Kirk Ferentz said. They came in here to win a football game, and they did a lot of really good things. But I thought as things, as we pressed on and pushed on, we kept playing. That's one thing this team has done pretty well for six games. They keep playing. They keep fighting out there. But I thought we started doing some good things in the second half. Then came the second half. On its second series, Illinois reached the Iowa 22. Then quarterback Jeff George Jr. overthrew his target and was intercepted by Iowa safety Brandon Snyder, who returned at 89 yards for a touchdown. That gave Iowa an 11-point lead and a shot of confidence to match. In the second half, Iowa outscored Illinois 28-3. The Hawkeyes ran the ball effectively, sustained drives and didn't turn it over. Counting Snyder's pick six, Iowa turned two turnovers into touchdowns. There also were a pair of methodical, yet important scoring drives. The second half pounding was expected. Iowa is supposed to challenge for the divisional crown. Illinois barely mounted a fight against Nebraska last week. Iowa's players and coaches always should celebrate victories, but beating Illinois won't leave the opening comments on the iClub banquet tour next spring. That's why coming into this game had the potential for fool's gold. A big victory against an overmatched opponent helps quell the frustration over consecutive losses, but does it mean anything going forward? After running for 19 yards against Michigan State, will the 191 rushing yards against Illinois help Iowa develop a rhythm when it plays Northwestern and Minnesota in consecutive weeks? What about Ohio State and Wisconsin in early November? The story of Iowa's season has been inconsistency from lineups to execution. Injuries have wrecked the Hawkeyes' offensive line. There's a new quarterback, a new offensive coordinator and mostly new wide receivers. The Hawkeyes have shown potential in maddening mistakes. Iowa could be 6-0, but it also could be 3-3. The Hawkeyes were one play from beating Penn State and one play from losing to Iowa State. It's no secret we have a lot of talent, a lot of very capable guys on the team that can make big plays, that can win a game for us, Iowa defensive end Parker Hess said. I think the challenge right now is just trying to raise that standard on every single play. We've had good moments this year, Neiman said. 
Even in those two losses we had times where we played well, and times we didn't, and, really, it's just consistency. Putting a whole game together. Even in the first half Saturday we didn't come out at the right tempo that we needed to. We let them hang around and really just trying to put together full games being consistent, but right now you're not necessarily going the best you are. You want to be your best later on in the season. So we've just got to continue to grow and get better. The remainder of this season has yet to form into something positive or negative. There's potential for both. The upcoming bye week helps with those assessments. If Iowa improves, it could be a memorable season like a handful of others. If not, it's on the wall to cold to shoulder scrap heap.